I do want to start with Paul. We haven't gotten a chance to talk to you since the events of Sunday. I know you've been reeling just as the rest of us. How did you even find out what was going on on Sunday? Um, I was sitting on the couch and just like every morning on a Sunday morning, just having breakfast. And um, a text comes across my phone and there's like, they was asking me, has, has something happened to Kobe? And like literally 30 seconds later, I get a call from Kevin Garnett. And so I'm like, you know, he called me pretty early. He usually don't call me this early. And he called me and he was like, did you hear the news? And he was kind of breaking down and real, very hysterical. And then I just dropped, I remember dropping the phone and it just, like even right now, it doesn't yeah. even feel real. Um, you know, a guy who, who motivated me, who brought the best out of me, you know, on and off the court. And I tell people to today, you know, there, there will be no Paul Pierce the truth without Kobe. I mean, if people know where the, the nickname The Truth came from, it was from me having a really good game against Kobe Bryant and Shaq dubbing me The Truth. And so um, it was very hard for me to just like, you know, I felt like I lost a brother. You know, I felt like I lost a family member. I mean, the impact of this from a guy, and I'm not gonna sit here and say I was very close to Kobe, but we had a lot of great moments together on and off the court. And, um, you know, he brought, the, he brought the very best out of me. Um, as a competitor on the court. Look, you guys were present for some of the biggest moments in each other's lives. Yeah. That is remarkable and something, mm -hmm. and you both understood each other in the way that frankly, some of us lay people um, are never gonna be able to feel that same experience. You did go up against him in multiple NBA finals. What was your relationship when you guys were younger and in the league and then through those finals and playing against each other? I think after the two finals, like younger, we didn't have much relationship. I had a chance to really meet him when he first came out of high school. At the mm -hmm. forum, he was shooting an Adidas commercial. That's where I first met him. Hmm. And then, uh, you know, as a Boston Celtic and a Laker, you know, you kind of like hated the Lakers. Yeah. So we didn't have much of a relationship. But as we got older, we played in two finals against each other. We ended up business part partners later in our career. Uh, we grew up much mutual respect for one another. Mm -hmm. So at times when I would see him off the court, um, we would talk hoops, we would talk business. And, um, you know, it just started developing in that relationship. But I I'll tell you a story, and I heard Scalabrini say this the other day. We were shooting a commercial in uh, Los Angeles at an airport hangar. Mm -hmm. A lot of the Nike guys, and you know, we're casually, me and him are going one-on-one -on -one for the camera. Like, okay, let's guy, guy set up, let's shoot the shot of you going one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm casually dribbling, like, like a walk around, shoot around type mm -hmm. of thing. And so I'm going through a move, and he pokes the ball away out of my hand, and I'm like, let's get this right, shot, you right. know what I mean? Kind of like, and so I get the ball again, and I do it again, he pokes it out again, I'm like, okay, hold on. <laughs> and then next thing I know, we engage in, in the commercial in a one-on-one -on -one battle. And that's how competitive oh, he wait. was. <laughs> it was like we supposed to like kind of like right, you know dummy it, little... dummy it up, but it, it just turned into a one-on-one -on -one battle with both sweating, like a mini <laughs> like two three minute one-on-one -on -one battle in a commercial shoot. I'll never forget that. And I bet he could <laughs> tell you afterward who won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably got me. Pretty sure he did. <laughs> that's what I always joked about those puppet commercials with LeBron and Kobe that Nike did. They had to use puppets because Kobe was so competitive. They yeah. never could have gotten that dialogue for real in a real life situation with the two <laughs> yeah. of them where they were getting the best of each other. Kobe would not have stood for it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that there, was a very funny moment. There is no way. You mentioned the finals. Look, those were some of the most memorable finals yeah. with the way that they both laid out, frankly, tough, long series. Yeah. What, what sticks out to you as the battles you guys went uh, uh, on the court? I mean, like I said, if there was no Kobe, there would be no Paul Pierce, the truth. I mean, like I said, I got my nickname playing against Kobe. Mm -hmm. I won a championship playing against him. He beat us in the championship, and I think that's his favorite one of all of them. I, I think it is, too. Truth. <laughs> because how it went down. I mean, we talked about this, and me, him, and Kevin talked about it at lockout meetings. Mm -hmm. We had a chance to share a lot of different moments, and just to get that revenge. It yes. was just like he wanted that revenge so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like he, he, he worked after that season. They won the next year, but it was, it, he, I don't know if it felt it the same as feel, beating yes. us. It no, didn't it feel was, right beating Orlando. I can tell you for so sure. When, that when we got them really again, important it was like everything he ever wanted uh, out of all the championships, and, and he got us, and um, that one hurts to today. He, he, I mean, told it, he told us on the podcast that was one of the hardest moments in his life. The 2008 loss to you guys yeah, was one of the I know hardest he took moments it very in his life. Hard. I mean, yep. I yep. never seen him cry, and I, I saw him cry, and I was like, "We gotta be ready for yeah. next year because he's, he's gonna come back. He's, he's coming. coming. So guys, <laughs> well, let's, think let's... about everything that had happened <clears throat> since Shaq left, 
and that was his, as he saw it, chance, right? To yeah. That, that time, so uh, 2008 was, oh wow, and yeah. he lost that to you guys, and I think there was a little bit of a moment of, am I ever really gonna get back to holding up that golden trophy again, and of course then he was won the next two I years. Mean, he just, he represented uh, an entire generation on how you should really work, how competitive, I mean, there's so many great stories, it's just like, you know, I beat a guy who's arguably the greatest player in NBA history, and I matched up with him and held my own. Right. It was like, wow, like I said, it wouldn't be no Paul Pierce the truth without Kobe. I mean, where would I, where, which way would my career turn? I mean, how motivated would I be? I mean, would I even, you know, have a championship? I mean, it's like to do it against him, it's, it's, it means more than like any other team in the league against a rival, against one of the greatest players. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because of him, I'm stitched in NBA history. I'm, I'm curious, you know, maybe the most pivotal moment of your entire career was game four of that first finals at halftime. Mm -hmm. You guys are getting drilled and you go to Doc and say, I want to guard Kobe. Yeah. I wonder <laughs> what you remember of that moment because you know, I, he might light me up. Yeah, it might, it might, I mean, go, it might go badly for me. <laughs> I know it could have went badly, but I was always one as a leader of the team that like, look, I'm going to go down fighting too. I mean, this guy's competitive. Right. I'm tired of him seeing him shoot all these fadeaways and getting these easy buckets. <laughs> At least let me see if I can slow him down. At least let me put a body on him. Let me see. And this is just the competitive gene that I had that I wanted to try to match it. I want to see where I am. If you want to be great, you have to go against the best. And that's what I wanted. And I held my own. And, you know, that I think was a, a great point in my career that said a lot about my pride, but like just to do it against Kobe. If you're one of the best, you want to go against the best. I mean, that's Kobe Bryant. Right. Mm -hmm. I want a piece of this. Right. Like a lot of people don't say that, but um, I'm happy that he didn't have one of those epic, you know, 50 point games on me, but he had some pretty good, <laughs> <laughs> he had some very good shots on me. It was difficult. It was probably the most difficult matchup ever.